Yeah, so I'm just going to take you through Islet Tumors management strategies. These are my affiliation and uh, my financial disclosure. So we know, we all know that there is area of islet tumors. It could be benign islet tumors. It could be an inflammation, which can be simulating a tumor. Malignant islet tumors, we have the list of it. And we have lethal islet tumors. So the management strategies depends upon your clinical diagnosis and what kind of tumors that you're dealing with. So most importantly in islet tumors, you need to differentiate. You need to know the differentiating features between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor. And these are the red flags. If there is a rapid growth, if it's firm in consistency, nodularity, ulceration, lash loss, intrinsic vessels, feeder vessels, and regional lymph nodes. So when you are sure clinically that this is what you're dealing with, then you plan your management strategies. As far as benign tumors are considered as kissing nevers, it's mainly cosmetic benefit for the patient. Of course, therapeutic as well, and diagnostic. So this is a kissing nevers which was excised by stripping and shaving of the upper lid and the lower lid. You have this... Uh, um, seborrheic keratosis of the upper lid where total excision biopsy was done, skin graft and blepharoplasty from the other side for the skin graft was done. This is neurofibroma, localized neurofibroma where a right eye, forehead, total excision biopsy with skin graft and also she needed a levator palpebrae superioris resection. So these are benign tumors. It's mainly cosmetic that you're dealing with, all right? Xanthalasma, the patient added blepharoplasty for both the eyes, which cosmetically enhanced his look also for the xanthalasma of the left eye. Now, we do have these vascular tumors where can, we can treat conservatively, even without surgeries, as in this case of oral proctonol in a capillary hemangioma with topical timolol malleate. And this is a case of an eyelid varix. All right, a venous malformation where an intralesional injection of bleomycin, one session was given and the entire lesion regressed. Now coming to the malignant lesions, it is so very important. That's when I wear the hat of an ocular oncologist rather than an ophthalmoplastic surgeon because principles of oncology is very, very important. And why is it so important? It is related to the outcome in terms of recurrence, in terms of mortality and morbidity of these patients. In fact, you have these lethal tumors which can have regional and lymph, lymph node metastasis and systemic metastasis. So what is the principles of surgical management in malignancy? You need to have the complete extirpation of the tumor, intraoperative margin clearance, pathological confirmation of the diagnosis, and in fact, after the pathological confirmation, if you need any adjuvant treatment, you should be in par with it. So that is why malignant eyelid tumors are so very different and has to be dealt differently. Now, as far as the primary surgical excision, this is what I do in my practice, and I'm sure all the oculoplastic surgeon, eyelid surgeons, and ocular oncologists do the same. We go for margin clearance. Clinically, we assess the margin intraoperatively, four millimeters on either side, lateral, medial, inferior, and also the posterior lamella, as you can see here, is excised. So there are two ways of Assessing the margin control, one is frozen section. That's what I do in my practice because I'm not a most surgeon and also most micrographic surgery. Now, this is a small lesion of sebaceous gland carcinoma, right upper lid, excised, margin clearance, direct repair. We can also have larger lesion, okay? This is a patient with lower and upper eyelid sebaceous gland carcinoma, both fend for margin clearance, and this is how he looks like after reconstruction and follow-up, no recurrence. Now, the question of MAP biopsy in... Uh, sebaceous gland carcinoma. You can have a nodular lesion or you can have a diffuse pegetoid spread. So when you have a nodular lesion in the eyelid and you have these diffuse conjunctival congestion, it is so very important to also assess pegetoid spread in the conjunctiva with the MAP biopsy, and these are the representative areas from the bulba conjunctiva, the tarsal conjunctiva, and the fornix, and this is how many lesions, almost 17 to 18 Two, by two into two millimeter lesions are taken out and sent for MAP biopsy. Now, when you have a large lesion like this, as a surgeon, I, as an ocular uh, oncologist, I want a margin clearance after excision. So what I do is I chemo reduce it. I give chemotherapy initially, chemo reduce it to an extent when now I can ex excise it with a margin clearance. Now, 
certain things are very patient specific. So this old man, gentleman, he's 85 year old. So he was not fit for chemotherapy because of his renal uh, function and his liver function status. So the only option that I had in this malignancy it was a squamous cell carcinoma was to give a stereotactic radiation. So this is how he presented. This is actually after two months of stereotactic radiation where the tumor has completely regressed. Now, exenteration, yes, we barely use it now because we have so many armamentarium where we are trying to preserve the globe and the vision. But well, in certain situation, you go for a exenteration and orbital extension and diffuse pegetoid spread. And well, make sure that we cosmetically rehabilitate these patients. Now, now we are into an advanced era of biologics. So this was the first drug which came up as a targeted therapy in periocular and eyelid malignancies, the hedgehog inhibitor pathway inhibitor, that is vismodegib, and basal cell carcinoma was the tumor which was initially treated with. Then we s saw many, many other checkpoint inhibitors and biologics, and this is the epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitor targeted therapy with erlotinib, afatinib, cetuximab, absmabs, where Targeted therapy is done in order to treat squamous cell carcinoma. So this is, I don't have any personal experience in India with this, but these are, uh, this is from uh, MD Anderson, Dr. Beta Smiley's patient where they have tried epidermal growth factor receptor. So we have various other checkpoint inhibitors which has come into work for eyelid melanomas, cutaneous melanomas, CTLA4 inhibitors, PDL1 in inhibitors, PDL1. So these are many, many, again, you know, monoclonal antibodies which has come up as targeted therapies. Now, going on to the last one, what is the indication of sentinel lymph node biopsy in the management protocol? Yes, it is indicated where the indication accounts to common uh, cutaneous eyelid melanomas of more than one millimeters, sebaceous gland carcinoma of more than 10 millimeters, and Merkel cell carcinoma, which is a lethalist of the eyelid tumor of any size, we do the sentinel lymph node biopsy where uh, technetium-99 dye is injected into the, uh, you know, uh, medial campus and then with the gamma probe we assess whether there is any take up in the sentinel lymph node and then a biopsy is done. Now, positron emission tomography is definitely done in lethal eyelid malignancy in order to assess systemic metastasis. And Possibly this would be the criteria for the pos uh, positron emission tomography PET scan in eyelid tumors. So to conclude, oncological principles is very, very important to uh, follow, especially in the malignant eyelid tumors with a primary wide surgical excision. So surgical protocols, applying surgical protocols definitely reduces the recurrence and future outcome and you know uh, of these patients with lethal malignancies because what happens is that whenever there is a recurrence there is a chance of these tumors and cancers de-differentiating into a severe variety of adenocarcinoma and poorly differentiated carcinoma which in fact affects uh, you know the patient's life so neoadjuvant chemotherapy as i told you can be given in order to chemo reduce it to give a margin clearance which can be surgically excised and adjuvant treatment modalities when it's you know, there are patient indication into it. Biologics is definitely there, but we do have challenges of biologics in India as far as costing is concerned and availability of the drugs are concerned. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Yes. The cataract, sebaceous gland carcinoma definitely. Not first. the hypermature cataract? No, ma'am. I think it's a large tumor. Because this is an issue. This yeah. is a real issue. And hypermature cataract and the sebaceous gland carcinoma. I, I would give preference for the I, carcinoma. I, 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 I will go on the reversal. I you will do the go cataract reversal? first. Okay. Let the patient see. Because the cataract will take uh, just uh, one day, means to recover. Okay. And the gang is, carcinoma is waiting for a long time, we can wait. I will do that. <laughs> I have done it. It's a good question. No, not the pagetor spread. It was a well-defined lesion. Yeah, ma'am, but it is in the tarsus. So any malignancy in the surface or the eyelid, uh, when you're going for an open procedure over the surface, as an ocular oncologist, I would never take that risk. Never. The patient will be blind 